Three years since another mother and her husband were charged in the disappearance of their daughter Sabrina. But today, the attorney for Marlene and Stephen Eisenberg is defending the couple vigorously. As MSNBC's Chief Justice Correspondent Pete Williams reports, the tapes originally used to implicate the Eisenbergs may now clear their reputations. The disappearance of Sabrina Eisenberg is still a mystery. Around 6.45, one November morning in 1997, at this house in suburban Tampa, Florida, her parents reported her missing from her crib after the garage door had been left open and another door unlocked. The parents, Marlene and Steven Eisenberg, feared a kidnapping and appealed for public help. We need Sabrina home. She needs to be with me and her father, our sister Monica. Her brother, William. But after a search for the girl turned up nothing, local investigators began to suspect the parents themselves. Listening devices were secretly planted in their home. Two years after their daughter's disappearance, a surprising development, the Eisenbergs were charged by a federal grand jury with misleading investigators. On the tapes, the government said, they could be heard discussing what stories they'd tell police and how to, quote, beat the charge. But then another twist. The federal court said the tapes were unintelligible, mostly noise, and did not support the accusations. So a year ago, with the key evidence discredited, prosecutors dropped the charges. The Eisenbergs, who have moved to Maryland, continue pleading for information about their daughter. Sabrina would be four years old now, looking something like this, they say. But solving the child's disappearance seems no closer now than it was four and a half years ago. Pete Williams, NBC News, Washington. Well, now that these audio tapes recorded inside the Eisenberg home have finally been released, the couple's attorney is trying to make sure that the world hears what was said or, importantly, not said on those tapes. Attorney Barry Cohen says the tapes are completely inaudible. Not one shred of incriminating evidence can be heard there. Mr. Cohen joins us now live from Tampa, Florida to talk about it. Mr. Cohen, thanks for being with us. Surely. Nice to be here. I want to play right now, first off, a tape in which prosecutors had claimed that Mrs. Eisenberg said to her husband, and I quote here, I hate you, I hate you for what you did to our tiny daughter. Here it is, and I'll get your reaction on the other side. <laughs> I cannot make out anything on that tape. Did prosecutors use some sort of enhancement that led them to believe that's what she was saying? Or are these prosecutors who just said things that they wished were on those tapes? Well, that's it. The prosecutors just said things that they wished were on the tapes because there's nothing on those tapes, obviously, but a lot of noise and a lot of nonsense. And the fact that they even use those tapes to try to uh, lay a foundation for a criminal charge against the Eisenbergs is, is unimaginable. Just think what it must be like to, um, to come into your bedroom, or your child's bedroom, and find that, uh, that um, the child is missing. Uh, and then think what it must be like to, uh, to try to be framed by your own government. Here's another tape, Mr. Cohen, in which prosecutors apparently claim that Mr. Eisenberg said, quote, I wish I hadn't harmed her. It was the cocaine. Well, in truth, let's listen to the tape. Again, I can't make it out. The people who listened to this tape before me couldn't make it out. Um, did Mr. Eisenberg have a cocaine problem, or was that simply made up out of thin air? Assistant U.S. Attorney Rochelle DeBetke lied to a federal judge in Maryland when she told the judge that the tape said that, Mark, that Steve Eisenberg said he harmed the baby because of cocaine. It was a flat lie. It was, it was done to uh, influence a bond decision and to calculate the public outrage against the Eisenbergs, which it was successful in doing. Well, let me stop you there. If a prosecutor lied, what are you doing to try to get that prosecutor disbarred? Well, unfortunately, that's not my decision. Unfortunately, uh, well, you I can file a complaint, right? I can't right? control that. Complaints, I understand the Florida Bar is investigating the, uh, the conduct 
of uh, Mr. Kuntz, the prosecutor, and Mr. Becky, another prosecutor. Mm -hmm. But uh, more importantly, what I think needs to be done is that the, uh, the Congress of the United States needs to take a look at how could this happen in our justice system. Yeah. I don't think the Department of Justice is doing much more than protecting their own, and the, the system can't accept or tolerate this kind of conduct. It undermines public confidence and trust in the government. All right. Let me let me play one more audio tape. I have not heard this one, but I am told it is audible, and I'm also told that it's one that you want people to listen to. So here it is. Son, oh, <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh, I thought I was getting good news. <laughs> That's Mrs. Eisenberg talking to a friend, as I understand it. Mr. Cohen, how is that exculpatory? How does that tend to uh, prove your clients are innocent? Well, it speaks so loudly to the, to the uh, trauma, to the state of mind of Marlene Eisenberg when she was talking in confidence to one of her dearest friends. You can feel the sadness, the, the trauma in her voice. And yet the government, when they went to the uh, circuit judge to try to get the warrant for the, uh, for the uh, wiretap, told the judge that uh, Marlene Eisenberg was very calm and showed no emotion over the disappearance of her baby. Well, let me play devil's advocate for a moment. Couldn't those also be the words of a woman trying to assuage her guilt or hide the truth from a friend in a telephone conversation? Uh, they, they could be, but when you couple uh, that there was absolutely no evidence, uh, so you, you're not much of a devil's advocate with all due respect to you, sure. because there was not one scintilla of evidence uh, in this case anywhere. The judge who listened to the, to the evidence said that the uh, evidence that the uh, government produced was basically pure fiction and it was a, 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 a bunch of deliberate uh, lies and uh, reckless disregard for the, for the truth. So with all due respect... Well, did the judge hold them in contempt then? No, he didn't hold anybody in contempt. That wasn't his job. Well, if he feels that lawyers are coming before him and lying, he can hold them in contempt, surely. Well, that, that was not done. But uh, he, he, when he was talking about the lies, he didn't address the conduct of the prosecutors. He expects, I, I, expect, I, I assume that he expects the Justice Department yeah. to deal with that. Right. But he did say that about the Sheriff's Office deputies. Barry Cohen, thank you for spending uh, part of your day with us. We appreciate it. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Nice to be here. Still ahead.